Ladies. Hey folks. We are making a quick trip out to the garden today to surprise, surprise, plant more plants. So it sprinkled last night and I was super excited this morning to see that it was overcast and was scheduled to be overcast all day. So I was like, I'm gonna go to the gym. We'll do a video later. The lighting will be beautiful. And here we are now at noon with full sun blaring down. I apologize, but I've got to get this stuff done because I work tonight. So today, I still have two bags of garlic from our garlic planting video that I still haven't done anything with them. And mom, if you're watching this, I know that you want the garlic. I just keep forgetting to give it to you. But I have finally taken out all of the non-frost hardy plants that I had, like the basil over there, the pepper here. So I have a bunch of blank space to plant some garlic. Unfortunately, I don't have enough space to plant the rest of this garlic. I have one, two, three, four, five whole bulbs of garlic, which is tens, if not a hundred or more cloves to plant. So I'll probably do maybe like 12 here in this space. And then I'm just gonna start plugging garlic in around the garden. <laughs> because it costs more than store-bought garlic if I were, you know, purchasing this for culinary purposes. So I don't want to waste it, which is kind of a bad term, but I don't want to waste it by eating it. I would rather plant it and get another bulb of garlic next year. I just don't know if I have the space and I keep forgetting to take my mom some. <laughs> I always end up purchasing more than I need of a lot of things that have to do with plants. <laughs> garlic bulbs, um, seeds. And in the case of seeds, it isn't really a bad thing because they can store well. Um, the only, I mean, most seeds can store well. Some of the seeds that don't store well are gonna be your alliums like uh, leeks, chives, onions. Those have a shelf life of less than a year. And I can attest to that because I did attempt to sow some Texas early grano yellow onion seeds uh, earlier in the year that were last year's seed packets and none of them germinated. I have never had such a clear distinction of viable seeds than this year when I tried to do that. So I actually ended up seeding a little bit later than I had wanted to because I had to get online and purchase some more seeds. Um, but for the most part, everything stores pretty well. The problem is this garlic isn't going to store real well um, in the super long term. I mean, it'll, it'll be good for several months, um, but I also don't want to plant it in the spring because it gets too hot. It needs cold vernalization. The cloves need to be cold for it to produce its bulb, which you can, you can hack by way of the fridge or the freezer. Um, but I'd, I'd rather just plant them all this year than try and save them for the spring when I know they're not gonna do well in my area or eat them <laughs> at the high cost of, you know, 25, 20-ish dollars for a half a pound of <laughs> garlic. So we're just gonna stick them places. Even if it's not near like a water spigot, I think we'll be fine. Now I am going to attempt to follow the rows I already have here in this bed with the rest of my garlic. And I am watering this bed and the other garlic bed and the onion bed by hand for the most part because obviously these irrigation lines do not run across every row of garlic that I planted here. I just got 12 cloves out of maybe three quarters of a bulb of garlic. And I just wanna say, I think it's so fascinating that I could take one small portion of this and regrow an entire one of these and just have seven to 20 times the amount of food from the original seed. I think that's great. That's so amazing. Garlic is awesome.
surprise, surprise, I barely got rid of any of this. <laughs> I think I'll just throw some cloves here in some blank spaces of my other garden bed. Although I still see garlic coming up sporadically, like just a little bit later than the rest of these. So we'll have to assume that some of these are gonna be planted a little close for comfort. I do have a blank space right here where I took the Thai basil out but this little guy right here is an Amsterdam celery, I believe. This is just leftover Thai basil from its stump. It's not going to live through any more freezes. But I don't want to bring the hose all the way just to this spot to water garlic. So, not sure I'm going to plant garlic there. But I think the perfect spot would be these pea beds because these peas will not last through the freezes like my root vegetables, my garlic, or onions will. They're going to die out shortly within the next couple months, which gives these guys room to completely take over that bed. And then we start getting into the weeds of when these will be ready next spring and what room I will have to plant. And this happens to me every single season. You know, I have my entire plan, my whole garden plan from start to finish in the spring and in the fall. And I've completely set out my beds to where I know that I'll have places to put tomatoes in the spring and peppers. And then comes <laughs> several months into the fall after the freeze and I'm like, I have extra plants and I have nowhere to put them. And I just start throwing things everywhere. And as much as I know it's messing up the original plans that I had for next spring I don't care I do it anyways and as good as I think it is to be organized I'm an extremely organized person and I love routine I think the spontaneity and the just absolute love of growing things and keeping it interesting in the garden is what kind of keeps you going um, I think that like if I were, and this is just me speaking personally, but I think if I were just a market gardener or was 100% only concerned with growing as much food as possible because you know like we needed it to live or something like that, the spontaneity would definitely be less and I would have a lot less fun with gardening. <laughs> but because it's, it's not only a lifestyle, you know I do want to grow as much as my, of my own food as possible. It's also a hobby. So I get to play around with things and have fun with gardening and just throw plants in wherever I can to see what I can grow. And that, that kind of takes the pressure out of growing your own food, is having fun with it and finding some part of it that you enjoy. Like a little bit of spontaneity here and there. Because anything, even if you like doing it, anything can become a chore if there's no fun and I don't want gardening to be a chore because then I won't have the passion to grow as much food because I'll just be like oh I have to go out to the garden again and I've only planted two bulbs of garlic I don't know where else to put this stuff I'm making more work for myself because if I start planting garlic in these beds where I have drip systems going to my broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage I'm gonna end up watering the entire garden by hand <laughs> the entire winter which I do not want to do. Even though I have been watering less. That's been nice. Look at this thin piece of plastic separating the tyrants from my food. I'm happy to say I've only had one disaster with chickens in my garden this year, so that's good. Also, the primary culprit for trying to get in my garden has since left the property. <laughs> But look at my onions now. You can kind of see them when you look at the hay mulch. Up here, not so much. But down here, I like this view a lot. And someone made a comment about just transplanting these calendula starts, which is absolutely a viable option. And I will do if we have some sort of really vibrant and healthy calendula plant come up. Right now there's over 20 little seedlings in here. 
And some of them didn't make it because I covered them with the grass hay. Obviously, I don't need 20 calendula plants. <laughs> so I just covered them with the hay to see who would win out, send their leaves up. So I think if the strong ones survive here, if we don't get too cold too quickly, I will maybe pull one of these out and transplant them. Um, the only issue is I risk damaging my onion roots when I pull these guys out. Because some of these little guys are pretty close to my onions. And apparently it's been getting pretty cold here um, at night. Of course, I don't come out every morning and check the temperature gauge on my stump back there. And I don't, I mean, I'll get up in the morning and look at what the weather channel says the weather is going to be. Um, but because I live in a microclimate here compared to wherever they read the data for the city, um, we are <laughs> way off in temperature than whatever the, the weather guy ever gives. But from the first freeze until now, we've probably frozen a majority of these nights. And the way I can tell that is by the damage to my plants. So look at these poor cabbage plants in my in-ground garden. So this is a telltale sign of just frost damage. It's just dead. And the plants are alive. The roots did not freeze. The middle of the plant did not freeze. And these plants, for the most part, are still doing okay. They have a lot of recovery to go since they lost a lot of their outer leaves. And it wasn't just my young ones, because that, that is to be expected in younger crops. They just don't have the weather tolerance that older ones do. But I had some pretty gnarly damage on my older crops too. And a lot of just losses. This was a plant. This is still alive, barely, but I don't hold out much hope. In fact, both of these rows were planted with fresh starts right before the freeze. So they took the hardest hit of the cold weather. So even back here, look at these Brussels sprouts and these cauliflower plants. It doesn't have to get super cold to do that kind of damage, but it's across my entire garden. I lost a couple of beets and a couple of radishes. So it's been getting pretty cold. I would say definitely mid twenties, several nights in a row to do the kind of damage on these established plants. And then it just flat out killed a lot of the seedlings that I had. But that's okay, and it was expected. I mean, I know that I get really cold nights here because we live at elevation in the desert. So we just have wildly differential temperatures from day to night. And with the El Nino winter, it's supposed to be a lot colder than usual. So I'm expecting to definitely lose some plants earlier rather than later. Normally I would say January and February is when we get consistently cold teens every single night. That might come earlier this year, who knows. All I can say is that I'm glad I did this sort of step planting where I planted um, my first round of fall vegetables and then my second round of fall vegetables a month later. That's gonna give me a better experiment of when to plant the next year because I'm always experimenting and I'm always learning and everything's always changing. <laughs> so you'll always be learning because you can't control the weather and it's always weird. But I'm glad I brought you guys along with me to throw some more garlic in. I have so much <laughs> left to plant and I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it. Maybe I'll do some container plants, but that means I'll still have to just water those containers. Everything is work. <laughs> but I'm gonna water these garlic cloves in that I just planted and then head inside and get ready for work. But I will catch you guys on the next one.